The Spider-Man reveal and the Doomsday reveal. Yesterday, I argued they were one and the same, but many of you offered a compelling counter-argument, saying that while the two reveals are indeed similar, and perhaps both a mistake, there's a crucial difference. And that's that Doomsday was merely a rumor for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice that had not been confirmed until he appeared in that trailer. Whereas Spider-Man was already confirmed to appear in Captain America Civil War, so it wasn't quite as spoilery. And again, I think that's a very good counter argument. However, an eagle-eyed BTT viewer, Daniel, has spotted a Doomsday level spoiler in the second trailer for Captain America Civil War. In fact, I would argue it's even more of a spoiler than Doomsday because while that rumor had been percolating, this really hasn't been on anyone's radar. So fair warning, I'm about to divulge a super spoilery theory. Again, this isn't confirmed, but I think once it's presented to you as it was presented to me by Daniel, you'll agree that it probably is true and it actually pulls everything that we've seen into even more focus. It's just, it's, 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 so, it's so beautiful in its simplicity. It just works so well. All right, so last warning, continue at your own peril. All right, so BTT viewer Daniel sent me this screen grab and he said, you know, here's a question, Grace. Could that be Pietro, AKA Quicksilver? And again, as soon as he said it, I was like, it is. I mean, and I'm shocked that Marvel allowed this to appear in the trailer. Although in their defense, I went over this trailer with a fine tooth comb. Many people have gone over this trailer with a fine tooth comb. And I think we all thought that just looked like an empty chair because with Pietro's white hair, it just seemed like a, a headrest uh, and the armrests out there, right? But again, once that idea is presented, you, you can't unsee Quicksilver in that chamber and it makes perfect sense. So uh, whoever goes, and they know that we go over these trailers so closely. So whoever's supposed to spot these things, but you know, again, whoever's spotting the trailer at Marvel knows the movie, I would assume. So they, they would be like, you can't show that shot because Quicksilver's in it. All right, so let's discuss what that means and how it works with all the other footage that we've seen so far. Uh, because again, as I said, it pulls the whole movie more into focus. And also, of course, uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson had said, or it had been said about him, that he had a multi-movie contract. So we knew he was returning, but I don't think anyone thought he was gonna return this soon. But again, when you think of the story that's being presented here, and that Captain America and Bucky and Captain America's guilt over Bucky is being so much explored, when you think of how Pietro mirrors that, it makes perfect sense thematically. So, so let's go over it. We're kind of, I think, going to go over a large part of the movie right now, and that's why I think this is even more spoilery than the Doomsday reveal. I have my notes here. All right, so uh, let's, let's get started. My first thought was, how many times is uh, Captain America going to make a mistake of leaving a body behind, right? This is the second one uh, where you're like, eh, just let him go. And also, while it was hard to retrieve Bucky's body because he fell off a moving train into the woods and, you know, they still had a mission to complete, uh, you know, they cleaned up, uh, you know, Sokovia. They had that whole situation. You would think they would have taken care of Quicksilver's body. And it was, certainly, at least Wanda would have been keeping tabs on it. So if that's the case, that means they still have a Hydra problem, right? Right? Hydra still has access to, uh, you know, whatever, you know, however they feel S.H.I.E.L.D. has continued uh, up until this point. Because, you know, we of course had the fall of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, and Winter Soldier. But still, who took Quicksilver's body, who had access to it, and how did they not know that it's missing? I would also like to point out that uh, they've, they've uh, retconned Winter Soldier, and so that, well, I think maybe Hydra was involved in the comics as well. They really kind of made it like a, um, you know, a Cold War situation with like the U.S. government made Captain America and the Russian government uh, made uh, the Winter Soldier. But then again, I think comics have been moving away from so much politicizing, and so they come up with like fictional, uh, you know, organizations instead. It's not Russia, it's Hydra. But don't forget that Hydra created Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. So Bucky can have a support group, uh, although you'd think he would get along with Scarlet Witch as well, so maybe we'll see that explored. But you know, all of, you know, these three have all been experimented on by Hydra and had their lives forever changed, right? They could be the, the you know, <laughs> the emo support group. 
and eat German German chips in what we believe is now Bucky's hideout. I was so pleased, on a side note, uh, in my shot by shot, I said, that looks like European food. And a number of German BTT viewers said, those aren't apple chips, as I had guessed, but they said, that is actually German food. So I was very happy about that. But speaking of Germans, don't forget that another Baron, Wolfgang von Strucker, created Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, uh, and of course was killed in Avengers Age of Ultron. But now we're going to meet another Baron, Baron Zemo. Now, all these barons are in the comics because, of course, Captain America was fighting Nazi level, you know, Nazi villains that had, you know, he fought them back, you know, when he was uh, during World War II, and then a number of them were able to stay alive as well, and he would fight them in current times. And in the Nazi party, <clears throat> they had a lot of barons, a lot of German royalty. But how did they justify having barons in Hydra today? I'd be curious, again, reaching out to the German BTT viewers. Are there a lot of barons in Germany still? Are they still a very much a part of high society, so to speak? Uh, but then also what make it seem like Hydra is like a, um, a modern day version of the Nazi party. And do they have strong ties in Germany? Because now you have two German actors, you know, the actor who played Wolfgang von Strucker, also German, and now Daniel Bruhl, another German actor, playing barons that are part of Hydra, uh, you know, much in the way uh, barons were part of the, the Nazi party. So that's very interesting. <clears throat> Now, also, there have been Quicksilver references already very subtly being put in to the uh, to the Captain America Civil War uh, Civil War coverage, right? So they're already putting him, uh, you know, on our radar. What I'm talking about is when they ha have that shot when uh, General Ross is doing his presentation of the destruction that the Avengers have caused over the years, and Wanda looks away, and Cap notices it. So you're like, ah, and as I said in my shot-by-shot -shot analysis, that's her being reminded of her brother's death. And, you know, Cap, you know, Cap noticing that as a good leader and as someone who, <clears throat> you know, very much wants to be in tune with his uh, soldiers. You know, he's that kind of a compassionate leader. So that means Quicksilver, you know, they very much are injecting him into the psyche of the characters going in. And the Russo brothers, by the way, let's remember, have said this is a very psychological film. And so uh, it makes perfect sense that they, you know, we've been assuming it'll be the psychology between Iron Man and Captain America. And I'm sure that's there. But I think exploring the psychology of uh, not only what the Winter Soldier went through, Bucky, but now what's going on with uh, Pietro and how his resurrection affects uh, Wanda and also Cap not wanting this to happen again. He let Bucky go. He failed him. He didn't rescue him. So he's going to rescue uh, Pietro and not make that mistake again. Now, this also pulls into focus that frozen tundra uh, you know, kind of uh, prison that we saw established in the second trailer. And that's not where they're hiding Bucky. And, that, you know, they're not taking Bucky out of there. That's where Quicksilver is. So somehow during the course of this movie, they become aware that there's another, uh, you know, the, the Hydra is up to their same tricks. And just like the Winter Soldier, they have Pietro. And, you know, they created Pietro's, Pietro, so I guess they could argue he's their property to some degree. But they're, you know, he's being held and they're going to resurrect him and make him a mindless soldier to fight for them just as they did the Winter Soldier. And I'm sure that Bucky, Cap, and Scarlet Witch are all like, no way that's going down. Now, we've seen at that base fighting between that, that uh, frozen tundra base, we've seen fighting between uh, Captain America, Bucky, and Iron Man, right? I mean, in that very shot, Iron Man is uh, hitting Captain America, right? Why, could they, why would they be fighting over, you know, qu releasing Quicksilver? Wouldn't they all band together? Well, I have two theories. One is that you know, Iron Man feels Quicksilver is a wild card. You know, he has very strong powers. It was hard for them to defeat him in Age of Ultron. They don't want to just let him loose, maybe without any precautions. So that could be a concern. Also, maybe they're just having a really, you know, uh, difficult conversation uh, and, you know, it gets heated and their emotions take over. Although that's very unprofessional in the middle of a rescue mission. Also, they could have be having, having competing rescue attempts, right? Uh, where... <clears throat> now you could maybe someone could argue this is like a shield facility and Tony Tony's guarding it, but I think Shield, uh, or, you know, or the Avengers or the U.S. government or whatever would have a, a, a better uh, setup than this. This seems very mad scientist, very Nazi, very Hydra. But maybe they're having competing missions to save. Uh, Pietro, and so who gets to him first, right? Because he's 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 a, a very strong weapon, and I would think that both sides would want to have him. So that could be the potential way that it's going. So I just I, now the last thing I want to discuss is whether or not it's a good idea to bring Quicksilver back. Now I loved Aaron Taylor Johnson's portrayal of the character in uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. I thought that we all loved his Euro trash accent. We loved his attitude. He really seemed very much to embrace the way the character was portrayed in the comics often, right? Although you know, also Quicksilver has a very big role and X-Men Apocalypse uh, this time around. So we're going to, again, have another summer of competing Quicksilvers, which is, I think, uh, very interesting indeed. 
But anyway, uh, I think that while I would like to see Aaron Taylor Johnson return in the role, I'm surprised that Quicksilver would stay dead for such a short period of time. And again, I, th I think that's why this would have blindsided so many of us if they hadn't put it in the trailer. Because you would think he would stay dead at least for one full movie. Although even Bucky didn't stay dead, uh, or evil at least, for an entire movie. And, and on that note, that leads me to my next uh, question. And that's, you know, perhaps, or theory. And that's that perhaps while well, they free Quicksilver, they can't break his programming. And he goes and stays a villain coming out of this scenario. And Scarlet Witch could either have to fight him or perhaps would join him, right? Or at least go with him to try and see if she can break her brother's conditioning. I, I, would, I think that maybe rescuing him would be nice, and I think there are a lot of good uh, parallels to the Winter Soldier situation, and it ties in, again, Wanda, it ties in uh, Captain America, but I do not want to see, you know, Pietro not only released, but also, you know, freed from his programming, right? I think that's too soon. I think we never really got the Winter Soldier being evil for a long period of time. We Now we won't have Quicksilver. I mean, think about it. Uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch turned in their introductory movie. They became Avengers right away. They were like, ah, well, you know, we're done being evil. So I would think that <clears throat> as the MCU maybe gets a tad darker, they said they'll never go super dark, but as it tries to get a little more, as they, you know, psychological, I would love to see, uh, you know, at least some repercussions come out of this movie that are immediately solved or, you know, I guess solved in the, in the very next film. So I'm curious, what do you think of this theory? Uh, what do you think of how it pulls the movie into focus? Are you surprised that Marvel let this get out there? Uh, and then also, uh, how much of the movie do you think is left that we haven't guessed at this point? Very interesting stuff indeed. A real linchpin uh, to the whole film. And uh, again, it would have been nice if this had been a surprise, but uh, you know, the name of the game uh, is it's, we, we like to dissect these and you know, sometimes we, we maybe get a little bit more than we bargained for, but that's what happens when you roll the dice. And again, good job, Daniel. Good job for spotting this. All right. Thank you so much. I look forward to uh, your comments down below and you can check out some other episodes right now.